Good day ladies and gentlemen. Today we are pulling apart an e-machine laptop. Um, this one, oh, a few years old now. Uh, we're going to replace the hard drive, which is a pretty easy task. Uh, while I'm in there, I might also replace the wireless card, now that I think about it. Yeah, that's right, I did pop a different one in. Okay, so we need to do that. So the only tools we really need... Well, they're not even really necessary. You can get away without using a magnetizer. Um, and it's either a... What are these? A size zero Phillips. Or a... Number one Phillips. So that's pretty easy. You also need your replacement hard drive. We're just popping in the original uh, Seagate... 500 gigabyte that it came with but it's a pretty simple and there goes my screwdriver pretty simple repair okay so first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect the power make sure you've got no power connected and if you have anything nearby that's metal touch it just to ground yourself so first you zap this thing to unlocked which is one of the ways. Oh, it's the other way. It was already unlocked. Oh boy, that was dangerous. Patrick could have just fallen out. Ah, yes, we do need this. Okay, so the uh, the smaller one. We've got uh, we've got one, two, three, four screws in the battery bay. Now these screws are all the same in the battery bay, at least. Remove them all. If you use your magnetizer, you're going to have no problems. Just stick to the tip. Now the rest. The rest are actually slightly larger. So I did that using the uh, number zero. And now we'll move across to the number one screwdriver. And all of these screws, every screw hole you can see, one, two, three, four, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I count that one. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 screws. It's a lot of screws. But it's all good. Because uh, we can remove them. Now there probably is a specific order to do them in. But in the grand scheme of things, that's probably not going to matter too much. Keep on doing that. Now, the reason I put a different wireless card in here is that I was using Debian. And it did not like the default card, which I think was a Broadcom chipset. So I popped in a, uh, oh, was it an Intel one? No, it wasn't Intel, it was the other, other company. Um, no, it'll come to me. Remove the screws one at a time. If you're ambidextrous, feel free to do two at a time. It'll halve the time it takes to repair. I think this machine's an i3. Oh, there's the model number. It's an E732. Now, like all computers these days, they usually have a general model and then you've got a whole bunch of sub-models or configurations. And then all you do is you just lift it up at the back and forward. So what you've got at the front is you've got uh, some audio ports, which sort of hook. Remember that when you're putting the case back on. So I'll pop that out of the way. Pop it over there. So if you were upgrading RAM, you could also do that here. Quite simple, you've just got two RAM chips, you just gently move the two things that, look at that, just pops up at you. It's great, absolutely great. To install, you just make sure it's, make sure it's pushed in. So if you were installing RAM, you don't want to see those gold pins. Make sure they're in 
like that and lock it in. Beautiful. So we're actually removing a uh, an SSD over here. Optical drive's a bit loose without the cover in. Um, and there's the little airport card. Wireless card, Wi-Fi over here. Sorry, I've got a background in Macs typically. Thankfully PCs aren't much different. This model I think was a rather low-end model. It's missing the um, dedicated graphics, so it's only got the uh, integrated Intel graphics for this little guy. These are little spaces here for VRAM and a nice big GPU, which would have uh, probably all just ran together and more heatsink would have just come around here, covered more things. Got your date time battery over here. Mine's a bit loose and not really stuck down. It tends to move about. <laughs> That's all good. And there's not much else to it. Not much else at all. So all you've got to do is lift up this little black tab. Careful not to snap it off. That would be a very bad decision. Remove the cable. Just pop it out of the way. And then I'm pretty sure there's no screws actually holding this in. Look at that. Just slides along. Lift it up. I was wondering where this SSD got to. Now I know. <laughs> and then... You've just got to go to all the work of transferring the bracket over, making sure you keep it the right way up. If you put it the wrong way up, you're, you're going to have problems. So we get our 500 gigabyte. Make sure all the things are around the right way. So you want the screw holes facing up, the label facing down. And you just undo the screws. These are different. The screws are different to all the other ones. So don't lose them. Definitely don't lose them. Transfer your bracket over. Just be very careful not to set fire to anything while you're doing this. I can't honestly recommend setting fire to things, especially things you own. No. All right. Just slide back in. No. What is this doing? Ah, they just pads. That's fine. Just some EMI gaskets or something. So that's all good. Now if you don't plug this cable back in, your USB ports on the right hand side aren't going to work. Which means you'd have one USB port. Jeez, that's just like a MacBook Air, the old ones. One USB port. And then lock your cable down. Put your other hard drive somewhere else. Just be careful not to get the demagnetizer too close to it. Mine's an SSD, so it probably doesn't really matter. And then we also want to remove the, uh, the Wi-Fi cards. That's pretty easy. You simply lift... Well, I only had one antenna attached. The other one is wrapped in captain tape. Lift up. Just be careful. You can, if, if, if it's tight enough, you will actually snap... Um, snap the things off the, the antenna connectors off the wireless card which I have done before and it's uh, not fun because then you get the little connector stuck in the antenna cables as well good times Azure Wave AR5 oh, gosh that's a tiny font AR5B95. So it's not too bad. Alright. Please enjoy this ad break while I go find the other wireless card. How are those ads? Pretty enjoyable, I'm sure. 
So I've managed to track down the, uh, the little card. There it is. It's a uh, it is a Broadcom chipset. Uh, 1045. So to get that in, it's uh, very similar to the RAM. I noticed the slot's quite a bit looser than the RAM though. Look at that. That's a loose slot if I've ever seen one. But that's why we have the uh, screw which I have misplaced. Huh. Here, screw, 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 screw. Found it. I can't focus on it, but it's there. So it's only got one little screw thing here. Again, keep touching metal as you're doing this, just to prevent static discharge. Ah, uh, now the RAM, I should actually have a look at that. It is uh, DDR3-10600. So what's that, uh, 1333? 1333 megahertz. I think. You know, I don't really, haven't dealt with modern RAM these days. I'm scared to think what the numbers are up to now. Anyway, if you've got captain tape on one of your wireless connectors, just remove that. And simply reconnect. Pressing down, do you hear a little click? There's a bit of tape there that holds it down. Which is all good. So we're done. Um, now we've just got to put it back together, which is basically reversing what you did. Actually, it quite literally is. So those two are little headphone jack and microphone jack. I want to just make sure that you line this up so it doesn't... Wow, that went together quite easy. So as long as you make sure that you line that up, you'll be fine. There'll be no problem. Whoop. Nearly lost it. So, best bet's probably to just put all the screws back in. Uh, there's no real order you need to follow. Might be best to start in the middle and work your way out. At least that's the case on most Mac computers. Uh, that way it... The case doesn't sort of go bendy, but this is a plastic case, so it's... Not as nice as a little metal one. Anyway, put your screws back in, and the order will do. I've forgotten where I'm putting screws. Did I do that one? I don't think I did this one.
and then switch back over to your size zero screwdriver, Phillips. Get these battery bay ones in. There we go. I wonder what's on this hard drive. Pretty sure I had Windows something on there. I guess we'll find out. Alright, battery goes back in. And then lock it down. You don't want that falling out. Hello, governor. <laughs> I think the battery holds about 30 minutes of charge on this one. Not the best. What are we running? No. Oh. It's more Debian. <laughs> ah. There you go. Gosh, rotational hard drives are slow. What's it doing? Chugga 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 Look at that hard drive light flashing. SSDs? Yep, get an SSD if you don't have one. Quite frankly, you're mad if you don't have one in this modern modern age. And there she is. Debian, ready to go. I have no idea what the login is. Actually, could it be Debian? Would I have been that cool? Maybe password? Ah, it's password. <laughs> awesome. Just awesome. It's pretty responsive too. Animations are smooth. This is our Debian 8. Good old Jesse. Fun fact, uh, Debian releases are named after Toy Story characters. Stretch, Jesse, Wheezy, Sid, Experimental. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, that doesn't make any sense. Experimental's not a name. It's not a people name. Or maybe I'll name my first child Experimental. That could work. Thanks for watching the video, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you did, feel free to hit the subscribe button, which I'll remind you in this outro. And uh, also, like the video. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. MacRetro, signing out.